What's going on everybody? Welcome back to LYH Tutorials. Today we're going to go over Adobe Illustrator and some of the basic tools in order to get started in this program. Right off the bat, we have our toolbar to the left. So our stroke, our fill. Now on the top, we have the property associated with these tools. On the right, we have more tools as well as a properties bar. Now we can change how our Illustrator looks by going up here and changing it from My Essentials Classic to any one of these that you would prefer over this UI that you see here. Okay, in order to pan and zoom the camera, we can hold the spacebar and then left click in order to pan the camera. And we can hold Alt and using a scroll wheel, we can zoom in and out in order to zoom in and out. We can also use Control, Plus and Minus if we don't have a mouse. So on the right here is a bunch of tools on quick access for many of the things that we use on an everyday basis. I'm going to go over layers, Pathfinder, as well as a line. But if you don't have these checked on, make sure you go up to Windows and in the drop down menu, have these checked on. So I'm going to draw four rectangles really quickly just to show the feature of some of these. With layers in any Adobe program, it's very important to keep organized because you can put things in front or behind each other. Similar to any other program, we want to keep this organized. We can show and unshow the layer. We can lock and unlock the layer. We can select everything that's in the layers. So this tab is very, very useful for anything that we want to do in Adobe Illustrator. With the Align tab, we are able to basically align things. So if I select everything here, and I want to align everything in the center, I can check that. Uh, or if I want to align to the left or to the right, I can also do that. I can also space these out evenly by using the Distribute like this. Again, this is to keep our drawing nice and tidy. Now with the Pathfinder tool, we're able to create elements from existing elements. So for example, if I drag this rectangle down here and overlap them like this, if I highlight, you can see that there's a part here. And if I want to get rid of this, I can go into the Pathfinder tool. Now there's many different options uh, like Unite, minus front, minus back, intersect. For this one, I'm going to use Exclude, which basically cuts the middle for us. And we can manipulate this as one single object, or we can ungroup and manipulate as two different objects. So the first tool we're going to go over is the selection tools. Now we just have the regular select uh, shortcut V. So if I click on something here, we're able to transform this to make it bigger and smaller. I can rotate it like this. Um, and if you want to transform uniformly, you can hold down shift and it'll do that for us. The other selection tool that we have is the direct select tool. And this one's more intricate. So if we want to just transform some of the points, we can select it, double click on the points, and it'll make a new geometry based on where we move the point to. We can also fillet the edges, make them more smooth by dragging the circle. So that is our direct selection tool, which is uh, A for a shortcut key. Next one we're going to go over is our pen tool. This is used to draw different shapes using lines. If we hold down shift, it'll draw straight lines like this. And if we don't hold down shift, but hold down our left mouse button, it'll draw, it'll draw nice arcs like that. Now we can right click on our pen tool and it allows us to add and delete anchor points. So if you notice back in our drawing here, there's many different anchor points where we left click. So one, two, all these different anchor points. If we want to add another anchor point here, so we can manipulate it like this, we can do that. And in the same way, we can also delete this anchor point if we don't want that anymore. So the pen tool is quite flexible and it's a very hard tool to get used to, but very, very powerful. Now with each one of these shapes, there are strokes and fill, which basically means the fill color and the outline color. So if I want this to change into a blue color, I can simply click on this, go down to the color picker and change this to a blue fill. I can also make uh, or change the properties up here in this toolbar. So if I want this shape to have no outline, I can check the no outline or none up here and it'll get rid of its outline. If I want this outline to be green, and I want it to be thicker, I can do that in the properties bar up top. Now the next tool that we're gonna go over is the rectangle tool, which is M. Very self-explanatory, we can make basically uh, any shapes with this. So if you right click on the rectangle tool, we can see rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, as well as star. If we check on star and we hold down 
and we press up and down, we can actually change the amount of edges that the star has. Not edges, but points, sorry. So up and down allows us to control the different points. We can also do this by clicking while having our star tool, and it'll ask for a point like this. So if we give it five, it'll make a nice star for us like that. Okay, so the next tool we're gonna go over is the text tool. And it basically allows us to have text in our drawing. So we can go over to text tool or shortcut T and just hit anywhere in the canvas and it'll allow us to type anything we want like that. There's also another way to create a text, which is if you hit text and then you drag a box, this will be the bounding box for your text. Now these two are treated differently because this one's more treated as an object. So if I scale this, then the font size will also change. But if I scale this, it'll only change what's inside the bounding box itself. So these are two different ways where you can have text inside your uh, drawing. Now, obviously you can also change uh, the font as well as the color of the text by going to here. So if I want this to be green, I can do that. And if I want this to just be a stroke or outline, I can also do that. But that's basically the type tool. We can also type on path as well if you right click. Um, the last one I'm gonna go over is the eyedropper tool. So the eyedropper tool allows us to basically copy the properties, namely stroke and fill of one object onto another. So right now I have a pink, uh, pink filled shape here with a black outline and I wanna change it to this, which is a blue fill with a turquoise outline. I can do that by selecting a thing that I want to change hitting I or clicking the eyedropper tool, and then clicking the thing that I wanted to transform into. So as you can see here, this object matched the properties of this object. Now we can also do this with text. Just uh, make sure that you know when we do this with text, it'll change everything. So it'll change the, the font, the size, the color, as well as the stroke. So if I wanna change this text into the more interesting one we have up here, I can simply do the same thing and it'll give us the, the same result. But that's about it. That's all the commands that I wanna cover in order for everybody to get started in Illustrator. I hope that helped everybody. And if it did, please leave a like and do subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.